Hello and welcome back to the How the Hell Did I Get Here show with Meg and Rachel. Uh, we're happy to have you listening in today and we're also very happy to have Debbie Milner with us. Debbie is the COO and Head of Client Services for Linked Strategies. They do uh, provide remarkable tech solutions by night and are a conscience-based marketing solution by day. Uh, Debbie has been a visiting lecturer at Oxford University and Harvard University, and fascinatingly enough, she can speak 13 languages. Debbie, thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. And she can curse in 15. That's, well, that's <laughs> I knew you were going to share that. <laughs> I, I was trying to withhold the information. No way, man. No way. Yeah. No, no one is safe here. It's too juicy. <laughs> too juicy, not to say. Uh, All right. Well, Debbie, if you want to tell us uh, at what moment in your uh, career, you've had an incredible career, lots of traveling opportunities, lived uh, on three continents and traveled on five, um, huge, amazing things accomplished in financial services and other strange and fascinating worlds. Um, Tell us when you had your how in the hell did I get here moment? It was actually quite recently, um, more recently than I, than I thought it would be. And as I said to you guys before, I'm grateful for having gone through this process um, because what I thought was revolutionary in my life actually could have fit into a pattern. So identifying this moment came down to uh, how I felt uh, in a precise moment. And I would say this moment came to me about 20 uh, 26 months ago when I joined Link Strategies. I was on a very uh, fast and efficient uh, driveway to, uh, to within financial services and helping businesses, and I was involved in some conscious work as well. But I was stopped dead in my tracks with a conversation uh, with a lady called Leah Kievman. Uh, and Leah is a partner in the business that I'm currently in. And in that precise moment, I realized um, that I had found the absolute clarity between the worlds that I had been seeking out, um, and it all collided in one conversation. I had found this highly intelligent, uh, motivated individual who is conscious herself, highly conscious. And what I realized was I could finally work inside a business, inside a framework, and lead that framework along with them um, to with, within the bounds of monetizing things as well. So I had been constantly looking for this way to, to heal the world uh, and to do that by monetizing the situation as well. And suddenly I found myself uh, face-to-face with this individual who was all those things in one. Uh, and I found it in an area of the world that I had never been in before. I'd never been in marketing. Marketing had never never come across my uh, my path. It was just stuff we threw over the fence when we needed something done. So um, this was revolutionary for me. It was a time when in my life as well when I was looking for uh, simplicity and I realized in that precise moment that I would be able to work being true to myself as an individual uh, and be able to finally bring out of myself all of these different experiences and apply myself in with all the with all the holistic and marvelous energy that the universe could give me. I could apply myself to uh, to healing the world using all these skill sets that I picked up. Wow, that sounds amazing. It was a good moment. Um, I never shared it with her, actually. This is going to be the first time she hears it, so I'm assuming she's going to cry. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think of all the moments in my life when I, when I suddenly realized that I could, I could be myself, truly myself, um, and use my skill sets in a way that I'd been waiting for. It was a, you know, um, a very, and it was an extraordinary moment, and and it, it felt like a collision, actually. Um, it actually felt like a sound in my head is the, the best way to describe it. I'd never felt that before, where I actually physically had to take a deep breath because I thought, this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. And, and there wow. it was. 
So, and so when you were having the conversation with Leah, you in your head were having all of this chaotic awareness, yep. but, but did you sort of know it at the moment or did you have to process it later or? Uh, it's, it's a great question. Actually. I knew at the moment that something was changing. I found myself speaking in a different way, a way that I'd never spoken before. Um, when I was speaking with her, I found myself almost in an out of body experience. Um, I usually speak from the head and it comes out, but I found myself talking to her in a way that I'd never communicated before, at least in a commercial environment. And then it was only afterwards that evening and over the coming days that I realized what had happened. And I actually, it took me, it took me some time. I actually needed to take a day out and I walled my room, uh, my office. I showed it to Nate. I showed him pictures of this. I had walled my entire office. I hadn't started out meaning to do it, but the thoughts and the concepts were just flowing out of me. Um, I was calling, you know, team members across the ocean in the United Kingdom because they were the only ones who were awake, talking through some of the ideas that I was having. Um, it was just, you know, part of this was me just writing everything down and, and brainstorming by myself and then throwing this out at the team all over the world, uh, who must have thought I was crazy. Um, but Nate and Leah were both very patient listening to this. Uh, but it, it was, so part of the, the, the revolution happened at that moment. I did feel different at the moment, um, but the transformation definitely happened after that. I love that. Well, when we were looking, you took our assessment and we found out you're an independent, which really means that you love new challenges. You like things that aren't routine. You, lo you love the idea of always striving for more. And, and also you're barely an independent, uh, just on the other side of the line, which means that you like thinking through those things by yourself, which made me smile when you said, you know, I just had to like sort of pour it out of me and have it come out and then share it. And that's definitely um, an independent tendency, but you're also very close to a fixer, which means you love to change the world for the betterment of other people. So um, I guess the, it seems like an obvious connection, but you know, does that make sense to, to you and how you very much so. Very much so. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I find actually, it's interesting that you say I'm on the border of it. That's fascinating to me because when I don't have time to think things through and I, I have to speak them through, they don't come out of me in an organized fashion. I do need to write it down, put it together, and then take it to somebody once I've consolidated my thoughts. Otherwise, too much flows out of me uh, in a way that is, not, that is not understandable or reasonable to, to others. Um, so I do find that. And I find, interesting, my own slogan to myself on my wall, I have three things written there. One says ethical and accountable. Um, and the second is pursuit of excellence, which is exactly what you just mentioned. So mm -hmm. they literally are on my wall. Um, I love, in it. Front of I love yeah. it. And I think too, you have such a fascinating background that wanders the world and, and has always sort of seeking that next level of challenge that I think that um, independence also sort of resonates with the arc of your career and all you are in finance, but I know you, you were in different roles and, and different opportunities and you took advantage of things when they came up. And so do you think that you, you've been with um, link strategies now for a little while, do you think that there's enough variability and challenge that will keep you excited about continuing that work for a while? Or do you feel like there's going to become a time where you're going to seek the next thing? I cannot see myself moving on from here for three reasons. One, I work with an executive team, particularly Nate and Leah, who are humble. Uh, and humility for me is a key aspect of learning. Very difficult to find in CEOs. Very difficult to find in executives. Two, um, it's a conscious business, truly conscious, which means that um, the we, are, we hold ourselves accountable and, and our clients accountable uh, for who they are. And I love that. And three is I get, I have enormous freedom. I have enormous freedom to think 
and um, and to to make and to change to change things not for the sake of change but for the sake of betterment uh, and I love that I love being able to stretch out and do different roles um, we're not going to grow very big we don't want to be a huge company and I love that as well uh, it's going to stay small and smart which I love so I feel very much and I think that it's an interesting question you asked me because I've just realized now, as you asked the question, that feeling I had inside myself when I spoke to Leah was that I was finally at home. I'd found my home. Um, and it was a feeling I'd never expected to feel from a commercial perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting. We always tell clients to, to try to find a way to allow their people to thrive in the roles that they're in or in roles that suit them. And it feels to me... Debbie, like you have found the role that you can thrive in. And that seems kind of magical. It is. It does feel like it feels this, this, I mean, we just had an offsite now for a week, um, as you know, and it, um, it feels when we are together, it literally feels like there is magic, that anything is possible. And, and there is no fear uh, within the business and no negativity is allowed within the conversations not honesty. Honesty is is encouraged, but negativity is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and it's transformed me. You know, I come from a financial services background, so I was kind of heavy. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when mistakes or or when issues come up, or as as Nate likes to call them, challenges, um, my reaction was often very hard and harsh. Um, and I've learned as well to, to soften myself, which has been an interesting process, and to be more forgiving not only of others but um, of myself as well. So, well, It sounds like you have had an incredible journey. And as a fellow independent, I particularly identify with your desire to have freedom to stretch out. I like that term. <laughs> I think I'll, you, when next time I want to work from home instead of working in the office, I'll be like, you know what? Need some time to stretch out. My freedom. Stretch out <laughs> it it works beautifully. It works beautifully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, well, Debbie, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate your perspective, uh, especially with all your crazy, amazing background um, and places you've traveled all over the world. Uh, that's it for us today, folks. On the how the hell did I get here show. Uh, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Lead powerfully. Change the world.